Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday show. My name is Tracy, and while I get my computer adjusted, I want to, first of all, invite you all to like this video, share this video, please comment, and subscribe to my channel. All the links are in the description. Um, remember that January the 7th, 2023, at 5 p.m., I am having a virtual murder mystery party. That link is in the description section. And don't forget that December the 31st, 2022 at 11 p.m., I am doing a New Year's Eve show. i excited about that. I usually don't get to do that type of thing. So to in for that, and we're going to get started. Like I said on a previous video that I was, um, was in, this video mostly is going to be in my search for a wig. But I want to first talk about the Georgia runoff, which is finally over, thank goodness. So um, Raphael Warnock beat Herschel Walker. Um, it was way too close for me this one should never have went to a runoff. I mean, look at Herschel Walker. Look at him. I mean, what, why, why, how could, how could somebody go to the polls or mail in their ballot and say, you know what, that man, when he talked about werewolves, he touched my heart. I'm going to vote for him. Why? It should never have came to a runoff, but of course it did. So again, we're not one, but not by a whole lot. It was like one point something, something. I forget the total vote tally. Um, the Democrats thought they were going to have a 51-49 or 50, yeah, 51-49 Senate. But ah, uh, ah. Uh, Attention seeker Kirsten Cinema said, eh, not quite. And she announces that she's going to be independent. Girl, bye. You did not want to be primary. You know, if you had stayed in the Democratic ticket or Democratic wing, you would have been primary. You would have lost. So you said, okay, I'm going to be independent so I can't be primary. Stop. Stop with all this BS, what you jigger, or whatever you was doing. Stop. You just did not want to face a primary challenge. Just say that. Stop with this. I want to be independent. And you ain't want to take over the issues for Arizona. Girl, you ain't worked for Arizona since you got there. Stop. You did not want to lose in a primary. You were set to lose. Nobody in Arizona likes you. The five people who like you are probably in your family, I'm guessing, because who else is in there saying, you know what, that liar is doing good. Sure, she lied about health care. Sure, she lied about voters' rights. She's doing a good job. Stop. Stop trying to get the attention. Stop trying to, well, if it wasn't going to be her, it was going to be Manchin. One, one of those two were going to do it. But I guess now Manchin will stay because she basically beat him to the punch. But I still see Mitch McConnell behind this. Can't prove it. Don't have any reason why. But this sounds like something he would suggest. Just suggest, oh, yeah, you might want to consider. Have you ever thought about, well, they really don't respect you. But um, this, like I said, this is a person seeking attention she knew what she was doing she waited what two days after the runoff to announce this you knew what you were doing you knew what you were doing stop trying to get attention start doing your job maybe i don't know listen to the people of arizona maybe i don't know when you campaign for something actually do it and not totally turn around and do a 180 like you say you're for one thing, but when you get into Senate, you do something else. It's clear that you were in it or you are in it for the money. That's all you do is fundraise. 
Like, are, are you pocketing this money? Are you putting in a campaign? I mean, I don't know um, if Arizona has like, um, like when you're independent, if you have to gather signatures or pay a fee to run, but if she has to pay a fee, trust me, the Republicans will be there to make sure she gets on the ballot. There's no doubt about it. It's just going to be up to the people of Arizona to do the right thing. Um, but she doesn't get, she's not up for election until I believe 2025. Um, so the majority of the Democrats thought they had, they don't. Um, but even if they did, like, what were they going to do with it? I mean, they had the majority um, before, and what did they do with it? $1,400 checks instead of 2000 Only one check, no continual series of payments. COVID is still here despite what the CDC says. Um, what? I mean, and don't start me on the railroad workers um, being forced back into work. Yeah, they're trying to sell, like, I'm pro-union. But you're not letting them go on strike. You're forcing them to so go back to work, Joe Biden. Like, who do you think you are? Like, Ronald Reagan? Like, you're going to sit here and tell me you're pro-union, but you're going to make people who all they wanted was four days off, four sick days. Now, there's 365 days in a year. They just wanted four sick days. That, that's too much. I mean, they should have at least, I don't know, 30, 40 maybe, but four. And the real company said uh, that's too much. We're not going to give them any. Like, what? And you're saying they can't strike, but you're a pro union. And I'm sick of the media trying to sell this railroad strike or strike avoidance as a good thing. Look, I get that medicines travel through the rails, although there are these things called airplanes. Um, and I get they travel through these things, other things called trucks. So apparently things get shipped over the railway. Like, what do they actually transport? That's of importance. I, like, seriously, I, I seriously don't know because I'm like, well, if Amazon does one day delivery, you're not going to get that on a train track or a rail rack or railroad, pardon me, railroad. You're going to have to use the airlines to do that. Um, they don't deliver food, they don't deliver medicine. What is it that makes them so essential? I, I don't know. And I'm asking that question because I simply don't know. Um, there's just a lot of things that the media isn't reporting about that. And that's, like I said, the number one issue is workers should have the right to strike. Um, sometimes that means sacrifices have to be made. Those are not always sometimes pleasant. Again, I don't know exactly what real railroad workers actually transport. That would be of importance because I would figure those things would go on a plane or by um, like truck. Um, but to say, oh, well, they'll cost us $2 billion a day. Well, why don't you just give them more sick time and then they wouldn't have to strike maybe that's a good thing to do. Maybe you want to give them, I don't know, Bernie Sanders suggested seven. And let me stop here um, to talk about the so-called progressives that voted with this nonsense. What's your problem? What, like, you have no theory. You have no reasoning behind this. You're lucky that your voters don't pay attention to what you're doing. You'll get on TV and say you're for labor, but in the background, you're voting against labor. But come on, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, just like I said, it's, it's just been, you know, last week we didn't have much to report on, and this week 
is just everything came out. Everything came out like one, two, three, four. Um, and it's just, you know, I don't even know where to start. I know I started with um, the uh, runoff election and then kind of eased into the uh, railroad strike that was a avoided. I still think they should strike. I still think that they, they're not going to get, get anything. I think only like four of the 12 unions even accepted this, which means, oh, this must have been a bad deal because eight out of 12 rejected it. Um, I don't know if they do go on strike. Like I said, what's going to be the impact? But I know that anybody that works as much as they do, they deserve more than no days off for sick time. They definitely deserve, like I said, at least 30. Um, but we'll never get that because we have so many politicians betraying our votes. And people, I mean, like I said, there's a 75 to 85% dissatisfaction with Congress, yet they keep getting reelected again and again and again and again. And that's because we as voters, we kind of expect them to do that. We don't demand that they do anything except for what it is that they're not doing. We expect them to tell us one thing and do another. And then when we call that person to the carpet, oh, well, what do you want, Trump? That doesn't have anything to do with it. When you're a public official, you sign up for taking criticism. That's your that's part of your job title. If you can't handle it, don't run for office. Don't expect to vote, say one thing, vote another, and then have no one say anything about it. Again, I'm not calling some progressives names to squad, but we have to um well, the squad minus Rashida to leave. She was the only one that voted the right way. So I can't put her in that group of the senior, I mean, um, people. Um, I, it just amazes me. Like I said before, people will literally say, you know, want money out of politics, but yet they'll vote for the person that raised like the most corporate money. They want health care but they'll vote for the politician that's against it. Or they'll vote for the politician that says now is not the right time. When is the right time? When is the right time for student loan debt forgiveness? When is the right time for a $24 to $25 um, minimum wage? When is the right time that housing will be regarded as a right and not a privilege? When? You know, politicians, they never say when or if there's a time that it'll be right. They just say the time isn't right, which literally means the corporations haven't told me what to think or they've told me not to vote in the positive direction. I wish they just say that instead of this. I don't even want to call it platitude because it's just, oh, it's worse than platitude. Platitudes, although they disgust me and I can't understand why people use them, they have some, and I mean some basis, but it's beyond that. It's beyond sickening that you have supposed Democrats, not Republicans, you know what they're going to do. They're going to be against everything just to be against it. But you have Democrats specifically telling people, oh, um, we're flavor, but we'll vote against railroad workers' ability to strike. We're for health care, but we'll vote against Medicare for all. We're for ways raising the minimum wage until eight Democratic senators cross over to vote against it. And the and why should they vote different? The public doesn't hold them accountable. The public won't say, you know what? 
we don't like you option A, we don't like you option B, so we're gonna go with option C. Until we do something different, we won't get anything different. We have to do something different, something totally different than what we're getting because what we're getting is nothing. We literally, well, let me backtrack. What we're getting are um, unlimited wars. What we're getting is more corporate handouts. What we're getting is politicians taking the administration to court for a minimum, and I mean barely minimum student loan debt forgiveness, saying it's unconstitutional, but somehow it's very constitutional to give a corporate handout. That's perfectly fine, but don't give it to the people. Don't alleviate their debt. No, let's bail out the banks. Let's bail out, um, you know, Wall Street, or let's bail out XYZ corporations, but to give it to the people? Oh no, that we can't do that. We 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 can't have that. We can't have a country where people expect things. We have to keep them dumb and keep them satisfied. We'll do we'll say nice things, but when we get in office, we're actually not going to do anything. And until the public votes these people out, it's gonna keep going like this. We keep wondering why things are the same and that's because we vote the same we do not change the way we hello this is tracy and i want to let you know that the video that you just watched is just a snippet and to see the whole wonderful episode you need to be a patreon the link to be a patreon is in the description section please check it out and please support. We need um, as much support as possible. Remember, you can always uh, subscribe to our page and be notified when we get new videos. But if you want to see the whole video in its entirety, unedited, um, just, just off the cuff, no filters, no anything, be a Patreon. You can start as low as just $1 per month or five dollars per month um, we'll start to have polls um sometimes i'll drop into the patreon once we get a couple more members but again i just want to encourage you to support us on the patreon the link is in the description and have a fantastic day bye bye